In this advanced level video, we're gonna take a look at a few lowers that you can use to get people to the ground, some of which will even thread your anchor for you if you're using one rope so that sets you up for rappel or even sets you up to lower yourself. This is really helpful in an alpine environment where you might have a number of transitions down steep terrain with two people in your party or three people in your party, which is especially common if you're doing glacier travel, where you wanna get everyone down these little steps quickly and efficiently without having to mess with much rope. So let's take a look at a few different methods that we can use to get ourselves down steep terrain quickly. Okay, this first technique that I'm going to show is one of my favorite techniques to use in an alpine environment where you have short lowers and you need to get your partner down and then you wanna get down immediately after. However, there's some big drawbacks to this method, so I'm gonna talk about those as I go through the system and make sure we set our systems up correctly. So first, I've stacked my rope neatly, so my end, which I'm tied into here at my multi-pitch belay station, is on the bottom, and my partner's end is on the top. You could do, be doing the same if you were belaying at a multi-pitch station, and then your partner would end up on the top as you belayed them up and into the station. I free the end of the rope from my partner if they've already been tied in, and I'm gonna thread this through the chains, okay? Just like this. Now it's very important, this is one of those parts of the system that I said could be detrimental. It's very important that what you're threading through is 100% solid. So here, clearly we're in an environment where people rock climb, so these chains are fine to lower off of. The hardware is good. Some places you shouldn't be lowering off the hardware at all, especially in an alpine environment where the ring may actually not be solid stock. It might just be a folded piece of aluminum. And in that case, this would not be an appropriate technique to use. You need to have something solid that you're lowering through. Okay, and now I'm going to attach my climber here. You could either have them tie in or clip in. If they clip in, for a short lower, one locking carabiner is usually fine. For a long lower, you might want two locking carabiners. Okay, so there's a bite knot. So I'll have them clip into that, all right? And then this is the next part that's very important. I want to make sure that I'm far below my anchor for this system or I can get sucked up and into the system. So I'm going to pull out some slack through my friction hitch, or excuse me, through my clove hitch here for me to stand well below. Okay, so that should be sufficient so that when my partner weights this system, on this end here, if I'm belaying off of this strand over here, I'm not gonna get sucked up into the anchor, okay? If there's no way of doing that, then this is an appropriate technique to use. Clip myself in here, my belay plate, okay? And you'll notice this looks very, very similar to lowering in a single pitch environment in a top rope situation. So a counterbalance or top rope lower. One of the advantages of lowering this way is I'm pre-threading my anchor as my partner gets loaded uh, or lowers to the ground. And then once my partner is on the ground, I'll just have them stay tied in, move off to the side. So if I generate any rock fall, they're safe. and sit down and they become my anchor. At that point, with this loaded, I can lower myself by using them as an anchor on the bottom. So it's a really simple way to get one person to the ground and immediately transfer yourself to the ground. Another disadvantage to this system and why I typically only use it for short lowers is it's difficult to extend this and still have good control. So I'm not doing an extended rappel when I lower myself, but I'll often still back it up by putting a friction hitch through my leg loop here, okay, making sure it comes on the inside so it's not liable to red or ride up if it's a very long rappel, like maybe more than 30 feet. If it's short, I usually don't back it up and I'll just rappel down quickly, get myself to the ground, and we'll keep moving. So a good system to know when you have short steps of steep terrain you need to get down, say, in an alpine environment. Okay, 
This next lower is my favorite way to lower someone if I need to rappel off the anchor and it's a longer rappel. So I use this mostly in a multi-pitch rock climbing context, but also in alpine climbing with longer uh, distances to rappel or lower. So just like the previous one, I want my lower to thread the anchor for me because I'm lazy, right? So first thing I'm going to do is thread the chains, or in this case, I don't have to have bomber hardware. So I'm not gonna end up loading that much, okay? And then this is where my climber will either tie in or clip in. I'm facing this toward the direction that my climber is coming into the anchor, ideally. Okay, so they're gonna be coming in from my left, in this case. Now I'm gonna load my belay device. I'm gonna use the old Captain Hook method. You can take a look at my locking carabiners video to see how to handle lockers. I'm gonna clip it and flip it. And now I'm gonna load my belay plate with the brake side. So in this particular guide style ATC, that's with these uh, friction generating ridges, also pointing in the, toward the direction that my climber is coming in from. So the rope is threaded to my left and the brake side of my ATC is pointing to the left as well. I'm gonna load that in, okay. Next, this is the part where it gets a little counterintuitive. So I have another video on lowers. Take a look at the redirected brake strand lower, which will help you familiarize with this particular technique but I'm gonna make a bite, so a bend of rope, just like that, and I'm gonna feed that into my ATC and clip that right up and through. Now what I've effectively done, if you look at this plate, is I've redirected the brake strand through the anchor. So when loaded, my plate is going to take up most of the friction in the system and most of the weight and then this is just as much friction as if I was doing a top rope belay and holding the rope down. So that's why this hardware doesn't have to be that strong. It only has to take a few pounds of force. And if I turn that upside down, you'll see that this is the same orientation as if you were lowering someone in a top rope situation. Okay? So this is where my climber would clip in or tie in right here. And this side is my brake strand. And just like before, anytime I'm doing a lower and I have the ability to do so, I'm gonna back that up. Usually the only time I don't back up a lower is really short lowers, you know, like 30 feet or less, or uh, in a top rope environment where I'm lowering some off of, someone off a single pitch climb. But even then I oftentimes have a gree which is a form of a backup. Okay, so now my rope will run nice and smoothly around, no kinks in the system. Just like every time we're lowering, it's paying off the top of the stack. It's been stacked in advance. That'll lower down. Once my partner's on the ground, I know one end is on the ground. I can have them untie and move out of the way if I'm worried about rock fall. Otherwise, I can have them untie and then put a stopper knot in just in case and throw the rest down and then I'd be ready to repel. All right, this lower is a fantastic lower to know if you're doing an up to down transition, like you're belaying someone up a pitch and then you need to lower them down the other side, like you're climbing a gendarm and you're going up and over, or single pitch environment, they've climbed up and they just need to send them straight back down. Now, a quick caveat to this is this particular system that I'm gonna show you for lowering doesn't have as much friction as a lot of the other systems that I've shown. So you should only use this similar to one of the other lowers that I showed in a short lower context if you're using thinner alpine ropes or when you have a fatter rope in service, okay? So first I've set my belay device up for belaying from the top of a climb or the top of a pitch. Load it the same way you would, belaying a multi-pitch environment. Okay, so my device is, lower, is, is um, loaded in auto block mode. So as I belay, they fall, they're not going anywhere. Okay, when they get to the top of this pitch, now I'm gonna put on my third hand because I'm gonna set up my lower. 
is a very quick and easy transition into a lower. This particular lower is called the LSD lower, also known as the load strand direct method. We'll see why in a moment. Add my friction hitch, clip that in, do a quick check, make sure it's gonna bite. Looks good, yep, okay. So now I'm going to add another locking carabiner to, on the side of the plate where the ropes are coming out, the face, okay, on that side of the anchor in the same orientation and right alongside this small D that I've used to go through the ear of the device that's locking it into my anchor. And now I simply clip around. I don't have to lock this carabiner. A locking carabiner isn't required, but it's a good idea too, since I have it there. And now what I've effectively done is I've prevented these two ropes from pinching on themselves. Which has overridden the auto block function of my device. There's still some friction in this system as it's bending around this carabiner, bending around this carabiner, but there's a lot less than normal because I've disengaged it from these teeth at the bottom and there's no longer much pinching. But now you can see, I can begin to lower someone in that mode. So again, not necessarily the go-to lower, although it's very simple, unless you have fatter ropes or you're in an environment where high friction doesn't matter so much. Okay. This next lower that I'm going to show is my favorite lower to use if I need a fair amount of friction to provide a nice smooth lower or the lower is really long and someone is coming up a climb or a steep pitch of climbing and then I'm going to lower them straight back down that same pitch or off at a different angle like in a multi-pitch environment going up and over a gendarme. So in this case I've created an anchor that has a definite shelf and a very large master point and the distance between the end of that master point and the shelf ideally is six inches or more and that's going to make this much easier to complete and now i'm setting up a lower even though i'm going to belay the climber up into the anchor first i set the lower up first so pre-rigging a lower i clip my belay device into the end of the master point with my brake facing away from the direction the climber will come up. So the climber is going to come up on my left, so the brake side of the device is to the right. Okay, then I'm going to load the plate as if I was just going to lower them with a redirected brake lower. Take a look at my other video, my free video on the redirected brake strand lower to see this in a simpler format. Okay, so I lock that down. This brake strand hasn't been redirected yet. So to provide that extra friction, I clip another locking carabiner. Same orientation as the locker that's clipped into the device. And I clip that in, lock that down. So now you can see the brake strand has been redirected to provide friction. Okay, so this is set up in the lowering position right now, but first I'm going to belay the climber up. So now in order to get them to come up and use this in auto block mode, I'm going to clip another locking carabiner on the other side of my shelf where I've clipped myself in. Okay, so I've clipped that in the other side of the shelf there, and now I raise the ear of the device up and clip that in. And now I've effectively turned my device into auto block mode. So now I can continue to belay as normal, leaving everything intact. Okay, so I'll belay my climber up. Okay, so here she comes. Nice, here's my climber. And now she wants to head back down because that climb was uh, too easy for her. So she needs to get a little bit more pump going on. So I'm going to add my third hand. Okay. There's my brake strand. Wrap it up. It's going good. Checking to make sure I have a nice stack for my lower. Looks pretty good. And now all I need to do is remove this single carabiner, the last carabiner that I clipped in through the ear of the device. 
And if I remove that carabiner from the ear, I'll just leave it there for now. You'll see the device comes right down into the redirected lowering mode and she is ready to lower straight down that pitch. Huh? Okay, this last lower that I'm showing is a good lower to know in the event that someone is climbing and then you decide that you want to lower while well, they're halfway through the pitch or they get to the top and they decide they want to lower but you didn't know ahead of time. You could bring them up and you could anchor them, convert the system over and send them back down. That works out just fine. But this is a little slicker way of doing it. The other nice thing about this system is you don't have to have the separation between the shelf and the master point like I showed previously. So this normal quad here will still allow you to do the system even though there isn't a clear shelf um, that's separated by at least six inches. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is set them up as if I was belaying. Okay, and I would begin belaying. Belay, belay, belay. And then as I'm belaying, I realize I need to lower this person down. Okay, so this is an auto locking plate. So as long as the rope is running straight down from the plate, it's unlikely that it's going to fail. So I'm gonna leave that alone for a minute and I'm gonna start multitasking a bit. So for this, it's helpful to have a locker draw. That makes it quick and easy. If you don't have a locker draw, you just need two locking carabiners and a single length 60 centimeter runner that's folded up on itself, okay? And to make your own locker draw, I'm gonna clip that locker draw in immediately beside this small D that is through the ear of my plaquette device that's locking it into the anchor. And lock that down. And with this other locking carabiner on the locker draw, I'm gonna clip it through the carabiner that is running up and out and through the wire of the belay device, okay? This locker draw is going to provide the extension away from the anchor that's more than six inches and create a lower master point. This carabiner in the locker draw will become my lower master point. Okay, so now that is through that carabiner. Next, I'm going to clip another locking carabiner right alongside, right in here, okay? Alongside this blue locking carabiner that's attached through the wire of my ATC. And I'm gonna clip the brake strand through that. And I just continue belaying as normal until my partner reaches the belay. Once my partner reaches the belay, just like in all the systems, I check to make sure my rope is stacked well and it's gonna feed off the top well for my lower. And I take my friction hitch to use the backup, put it on my belay loop. Twist it up there, that's plenty. Check to make sure it works. Okay, that's gonna work. And now, just like in the previous systems, I'm gonna open up this single locking carabiner that's through the ear of the device. So it's a little confusing here because we've got quite a few locking carabiners. So make sure the locker you open is only the one that is in the ear of the device. Open that up. And this drops right back down and you'll see it drops into that exact same system we've been using. The redirected brake strand from the plate going back down with a friction hitch back up.
Okay, and now let's say we need to go back up again. I simply take that ear and feed it back up and clip it into this locking carabiner again. Lock it down and we're back belaying top rope mode, bringing my partner back up to the top. So that locker draw is a useful tool, especially if you're working with a quad.